Welcome back to the uh, We're Learning Development 2021. I hope you guys enjoyed Heather Younger's session. I found it totally fascinating. She's incredible. What a dynamic person she is. Um, and speaking of dynamic, we've got another dynamic spe speaker here today, Ken North. Um, I don't know. Many of you probably know who Kara is. I met Kara like in 2017, just, you know, like just a what was it? It was like a email message or something. You needed some support with one. of. It was a tweet. It was a tweet. Yeah. I responded to a tweet that she did back then. Um, once Kara got familiar with the community and I sort of started watching what Kara was up to, um, her trajectory like is no surprise to me. She's rocketing to the top and um, it has been really, really incredible watching her the last four years and the things she's accomplished, the things she's done. Um, Kara is definitely someone you should get to know. Um, you can connect with her on LinkedIn, follow her all over interwebs. Um, just look for Kara North. I'm sure you'll 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 find her quite easily. So I'm really really honored to have her here for this particular um, session. This girl is on fire. Five ways to fan your flame. I will definitely be sitting in the background eagerly um, um, drinking this stuff up because Kara never disappoints. So Kara, thanks for doing this and I'll let you take it away. How do I even follow up that, Louise? Thank you, I appreciate it. I am so excited to be here today to talk about something I think is really important and personal and quite frankly, it's difficult to talk about, right? Because a lot of us as women deal with things that other people don't know about us and we have a lot of things that are going behind the scenes. So um, I really wanted to have a very personal conversation today and just kind of share some stories along the way of, you know, kind of my quest of where I want to go in my career. So if you're here, thank you so much for uh, being here, putting stuff in the chat. I am going to try to monitor the chat as well. So I think it'd be great if, you know, folks get to know each other in the chat. So drop, you know, your name and where you're from. I think that would be great to get us started. But I want to talk about something I think is super familiar for a lot of us, having a really crappy day at work, like a really, really bad day at work, right? I think we've all been there. We've all just had those really, really bad days. But I've often found like after you have a really bad day, sometimes there's like a little nugget or something good that happens out of that bad day. So I'm going to share with you real quick, just to kick us off, a video that I found on probably one of my worst days ever at work like during my career so it's just like a minute um i will warn you there is some language here uh this is going to be in a very real unfiltered conversation so i hope this language doesn't offend anybody but i want to at least get us started here so give me one second here yeah i just saw this uh roomy quote that i love set your life on fire and seek those who fan your flames the philly translation of that is don't be hanging with no jank ass jokers that don't help you shine. The prerequisite for spending time with any person is that they nourish and inspire you. They feed your flame. There's been very few times in my life that I looked left or looked right and didn't find a person who believed and supported me. From Jazzy Jeff to Alfonso Ribeiro to, to Charlie Mack to Jada, like there's always been a person beside me fanning my flames. Look at your last five text messages. Are those people feeding your flames or dousing your fire? Put your phone down for just a second and look around. Look to the people around you. Are those people throwing logs on your fire or are they pissing on it? The people that you spend time with are going to make or break your dreams. Everybody don't deserve to be around you. To defend your light with your life. So who are the people in your life that are fanning your flames? Shout them out. Tag them below. I found that video, again, after just a horrible, wicked horrible day. And I was so inspired by this video that I started, again, I felt that call to action. I went through my cell phone. I sent that video to the people in my network that fanned my flame and that have been there and supported me. But then I thought, am I really, how can I take this video and really incorporate it kind of into my life? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. How do you fan that flame? And I don't care where you currently are in your career, 
you do have a fire. Even if it's just a tiny little ember, you got something there. So we want to fan it, we want it to grow, and we want you to unlock your full potential. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about, again, just kind of going it back to basics. We're going to throw some old school in here just to have a quick conversation. Then we're going to talk about filling your tank. And for filling your tank, I'm talking how to build that fire, but then also how to build your expertise and what that looks like. Also, I want to talk a little bit about planting your seeds. Success is not typically something that happens on accident. A lot of times there's a lot of work and grit that goes into the things that we accomplish. So I'm going to talk about what that looks like. Also want to talk a little bit about the importance of reflection and some things that you should be asking yourself. And probably the best part of this whole thing is how you can pay it forward and how you can give that gift and encouragement to other people. So we'll kick it off. I will admit with to you, I'm not a huge Shakespeare fan. I find that the older I get, the more I understand the Bard of Avon a little bit more. So this quote, uh, let me know in the chat if you're familiar with this quote, to thy own self be true, right? I think it's something that's really familiar with us. We know, we know that that's out there. But my question to you is, can you really say that you do that on a daily basis? Because I don't know about you all, but I know for me, as an adult, I feel like there's a lot of expectations of who I need to be, uh, what I need to be doing, how this looks to somebody, right? It is so hard for us to really be ourselves. And I know throughout my career, I have definitely felt like I've not been true to myself. I feel like there have been days that I should have, would have, could have. We've all been there, right? We've all second guessed ourselves. So. Something that I have done, and you can call this a little bit crazy, that's fine, works for me, so maybe it may work for you, is I threw it back old school to when I was my true self. This is me. This is me at six years old uh, with my very first computer. I just love this pitch so much because I remember that moment. That moment, I believed I could be anything I wanted to be. I believed I could do anything, set my heart on fire, soar eagles. I could do anything I wanted to be when I was a child. Why do we lose that as adults? Why do we lose that? Why do we lose that just fire for life, right? And I recently hired some people on meme and I made this like onboarding module about you know what it means to be in our training department. I actually asked everyone on my team to send me a picture of them as kids. And what I love about it so much is one, they didn't question me and think I was crazy for asking, but two, I just I saw them in those pictures. Because when we're born, if you've all seen the movie Soul, which I love by the way, we have these personalities, right? That are inherent in their gifts and, and they're these wonderful things that we have. And we lose them in the flow of work sometimes. We lose them on our journey. So something I have done to kind of help ground me is as silly as this sounds, I have this picture on my cell phone, I have this picture on my tablets, my computer, have it on my fridge. I have this picture everywhere. And when I'm having a really crappy day, I'm really like second guessing myself being like, you know, am I who I really am? Am I doing the right things? I go back to this picture and I let this picture be my North Star. Hey, Kara, you remember when you were six and you got that first year and you knew you wanted to do something with technology, but you had no idea what this was like. The World Wide Web, the internet wasn't even invented yet. You just knew you loved that computer so much and your parents sacrificed so much to get you that computer that guides me and deck with everything else to heck with everybody bringing you down that's my north star so if you have a picture of yourself as a kid i i encourage you get it out share it share it on social media with other people right um because this inherently is who you are as a person so own it embrace it the world truly is your oyster Another thing that Shakespeare said is the world is a stage. So have you heard this particular uh, quote before from Shakespeare? Another really popular one. COVID has done a lot to our world, obviously. But one thing that it did is I think it made our world even smaller. The fact that we're so connected and we can connect with other people. And I truly believe if you are listening to this live or on a replay or whatever, that the world is big enough for each one of us to have a slice of success. 
every single person listening to this now, you can be successful. You can do something for yourself, better yourself, better your family. And you doing something, it doesn't take anything away from that other joker on the side telling you how bad you are. It doesn't. Put them away, right? You are your own person. The world is a stage. So I am a big proponent of you know, building a social media profile, building a digital footprint. I think it's so important. And so as you're going through this, things I would recommend you to do, it's really important to expand your digital footprint. When someone Googles you, um, let you control that, if not just some random thing you were tagged in like five years ago, right? So fill that out build a LinkedIn profile, build your portfolio, whatever it is that you do. And I will tell you, this is like one of the biggest pieces of advice I give people it, because I lived most of my career under a rock. I didn't do this until, gosh, 2016, I think was the first time that I actually took it seriously building my brand. And I wouldn't have done it without meeting a fantastic guy named Mike Taylor. has been a tremendous influence to me, but you know, and they, Mike Taylor didn't build my profile for me. Mike Taylor gave me the tools to do it. Mike Taylor gave me that information. I had to take it and I had to do it, right? So don't expect someone to do it for you, but someone can influence you and someone can give you those tools, but it's up to you to do it for yourself. The other thing I recommend is if you're brand new to whatever your profession is, if you're new to learning development, welcome, the water's great, we're glad you're here. Use your newness as a way to share your learning and share your expertise with the world. I think that people that are looking at things with a fresh set of eyes have a tremendous gift. You're able to share a lot of your learnings along with the world. And my friend Jonathan Rock says something that I absolutely adore, says you just never know Who's holding the keys to the locks that you're trying to pick? So just because you know something, don't assume someone else knows it. That could be that nugget of knowledge or that encouragement that could help somebody get to the next level. So share it. Be, go out there and share that information because you just never know who could use it. One thing that I think comes up, and Shakespeare did not say this, FYI, about sharing on social media that I think a lot of people have a little bit of trepidation about is, you know, well, how much of myself do I share, right? And I think often, I think people get the word authenticity and transparency a little bit confused. So for me, authenticity is the fire and the truth of your words, right? But then transparency is the degree to which you share it. So I see my dear friend Suarez is here. I'm going to pick on him because he'll let me and it's fine. I am a proud mother of a cat and I love my cat very much. And there are people that I talk to that are other pet lovers that when we talk, I share with them how my cat's doing and they share with me how their dogs and cats are doing, et cetera. But for my friend Joe, who does not have pets, I don't share that with him. Now, is it because Joe hates my cat? No, that's not it. But I have a different relationship with Joe and we talk about different things. So just because I don't share my relationship and um, information with about my cat with my friend Joe doesn't mean that I'm not transparent. It just means that I'm just sharing it with people that are interested. So I think that's a really clear distinction. Authenticity and transparency to me are two kind of separate things. So as you're kind of wrapping your head around all of this, here are just some guiding questions that I want you to at least reflect on and think about, you know, where is it that you want to go? And if you don't see a path there, reorient yourself, okay? Maybe not a path right now laid out in front of you, but maybe there's another way to get there. Another thing is, you know, what can you do to get there? Um, it's Success and, and opportunities just don't fall the sky like a picnic basket out of an airplane, right? SpongeBob runs um, one of my favorite ones, the Magic Conch Shell episode. Love it. Club SpongeBob, I think is the name of that one. It doesn't happen that way. Uh, you do have to work for it. So what can you do to get there? And finally, so important, the people that are fanning your flame, the people that are encouraging, do they know it? Seriously, do they know it? Because you don't assume that they do. So if you take nothing away from what I'm talking about today, just do me a solid and reach out to those people, send them a message, you know, write them a letter in the mail, drop a part. However, send them a smoke signal, your courier pigeon, however you want to communicate with them, let them know that they've made a difference. You have no idea how much that could really mean to them. And they may be having a crummy day too. And that could be that extra oomph to get them over their spot. All right. Now we're going to talk about fueling 
your fire, okay? We're talking about filling up that tank. And here's something that it took me a long time to realize this in my career too, that you are in charge of your career. Let me know in the chat if you've ever thought, you know, oh, if I just go in and I take that extra assignment and I work really hard, that my employer is going to take care of me. I totally thought that, 100% totally thought that was going to happen. But what we found is, unfortunately, we are expendable at our organizations, right? And at the end of the day, we are in charge of our careers, no one else right? We can have guidance, we can have mentors, we can have, you know, these wonderful teams that support us. But at the end of the day, we are in charge of our career. And that's a really tough one to swallow, I think, for a lot of people. And if you're like me, again, this is something I completely struggled with for the longest time. But especially if you're here and you're female, I'm going to share some research with you done by Donald Taylor a few years ago that should also I think give you some extra motivation for this. So this is something that Donald Taylor did a few years ago about women in learning development. So just so you kind of know the trajectory of where we currently are, there are a lot of fantastic, fierce women in learning and development. However, you look at the very top of that ceiling, there's not enough women leading the learning funds, not enough women CLOs not enough women directors, not enough women business owners, okay? Now, why do you think that is? Could it be because we're not ready? Could it be because there's systems in place that discourage us from getting there? Could it be because there's just not enough time in the day for us to develop ourselves? Or is it because we expect it to happen to us? Or is it because we don't apply for that next role in the job? We don't check every box on that job description. I wanna really challenge you to think about this, right? So why do you not think there's enough women in leadership? Now, this next part, I'm gonna be full transparent here. This was probably one of the hardest things for me to put together. Um, I have been sniffling a little bit. I have been very emotional about this because I'm actually gonna share with you four direct quotes from people that I've gotten in my career, and I'm gonna show you how I overcame that to be where I am today. So the first one here is I was working um, in an organization. I was really excited. I had just finished my master's degree. I'd moved into this new position and really excited to work with this, you know, brilliant person, right? That had all this experience, right? And the th way that the training was being ran, I had a ton of questions and I came from it truly from a place of curiosity. I wanted to learn more about kind of why they were doing things the way that they were. And so I asked some questions, you know, why are we setting it up this way? Have we had conversations with SMEs about this, etc.? The questions really upset the apple cart, so to speak. And I got this lovely quote right here of, well, <laughs> I have 20 years of experience. You'll never, ever be an expert like me. Yeah. Well, how I kept it together, I have no idea. Um, I totally felt like the biggest piece of crap on planet Earth. I went home, I cried, ugly Kim Kardashian cried. My husband looks at me, he's like, what is your problem? <laughs> he's like, why are, you, why are you letting this person get to you, right? And I think it got to me because it said it went away, hang tight here. Hang tight. Hang tight. All right. Thank you all. Sorry about that. You know, good times, right? All right. Give it one second here. Sorry, Louise. Okay. Can you all see my screen again? Let me in the chat. Wouldn't be fun without, and I'm just sitting here like nothing happened. Okay, cool. All right. So this person, you know, kicked my butt, right? And I don't know what happened. I wish I had a cool story to tell, but there was something in me that said, you know, what? I can do this. I can be an expert, right? I, I, I can do something. So because of that statement, 
I really started to like look within myself and said, you know, I, I think I have a cool way to develop micro learning. And I said, I think I want to present at a conference about it. Ever presented at a conference before, ever. So I presented at this conference and it was a Greater Cincinnati ATD conference. And I'm sure looking back, it was horrible. I was so proud of myself. And walking into that room when someone introduced me, they said, and we have an expert here, Kara North. And my insides just beamed with pride. I was like, somebody said I was an expert, right? So from that, I knew I wanted to speak more and I wanted to do more stuff. So I put myself through Toastmasters to become a better public speaker. I know I'm still not perfect. We're all a work in progress. And I decided to really grind and present as many places and at many conferences as I could to continuously get feedback on how to be a better learning development professional and to put my name out there to show that jerkwad that I was an expert. Now, again, how many people would have just been stuck by that? I could have let it bother me, but, you know, I, so I'm in a way, I'm happy that I was able to take that and push it and, and use it as fuel. Another example here is, you know, I was in another position. I felt very confident again in where I was going, what I wanted to do. And I had the intentions of becoming, you know, the lead of a training department. I wanted to manage people. And I had my performance review. My performance review was stellar. I had the highest marks I could get. They were praising me for everything. And, you know, I felt in that performance review meeting and they said, you know, where is it you want to go? I said, I want to lead the learning function and I want to lead people. And I started spitballing all these ideas out because I, I was getting silence on the other side of the table, right? And I was like, okay, maybe I need to get some examples. I said, you know, so uh, I want some stretch assignments and I want to be, um, you know, the PI on a project. And, you know, I just kept rolling, rolling, rolling all these ideas. And then I saw this. So I stopped. And then I was told, you have to wait your turn. We don't promote like that here right? Happened again, right? So I went home. I was like, you know, I've busted my butt. I've grinded. I've done everything right. I've done everything by the book. Why am I not getting these, these promotions? Why am I not moving forward? And again, it upset me. I went home. I cried, etc. right? And then again, something just went off in my head. And it actually was, I was a member of my local ATD chapter here in Columbus. And there were some things I didn't really care for, full transparency. There were some things that didn't set right with me. And I actually, I think I made a comment to Mr. Suarez. And I said, I think I'm going to run for president. Joe's like, okay, do it. And I did. And guess what? I won. And so for three years, I was president of the board of directors of my local ATD chapter. And through that experience, I got to work with challenging people, to put it lightly. I got to manage budgets. I got to do a bunch of things, stretch assignments that I couldn't do in my day job because they wouldn't give me the opportunity. I made that opportunity for myself. And when I entered for the job that I'm currently in now, when I was asked about my leadership skills, when I was asked about how I dealt with certain situations, I had plenty, plenty of examples from my involvement being on the board of directors of my local ATD chapter. And those experiences helped get me my job. So don't let somebody stop you in that. If somebody says, oh, you have to wait your turn. You can't do that here. Nobody ever said you had to get all that in your main day job. There's a lot of fulfillment that you do outside. Now, with that being said, it sacrificed time away from my family, sacrificed time away from my education, but I knew if I planted that seed, it would pay off, and it did. These other two, um, I don't want to go too depth about it, but, um, you know, the one about, you know, you grew up where, doesn't that make you a hillbilly? That's just first ignorance. I am very proud of my Appalachian heritage. I grew up in Northeast Kentucky, and all my family is still there. And, you know, I think it really made me appreciate all the opportunities and things that I have 
in this world. So I wouldn't change that for a moment. But the fact that someone judged me because I grew up somewhere is just, I think, gross, right? And I know that there's a lot of people, sadly, that judge people for their upbringing, their race, their sexual orientation, like gross. And if you don't think that that still happens in the workplace, you really need to wake up. It does. So again, I let that be higher. And so anytime that, you know, I interacted with that person, I would actually bring in something cool about what it was when I grew up, where I grew up and the people that I, um, you know, grew up around. And, you know, now I'm in a place where I am able to be extremely generous and give my time and my money and things like that to the people of Eastern Kentucky. And it's something that I pride myself on. Okay, and finally, um, this one, <laughs> when I did finally get that role that I've coveted and I wanted, right? I'm leading a training department. I get the, well, but you look so young. Can, are you sure you can do this, honey? Yeah, it was not me either. So with that, again, I just try to prove that person wrong. And, um, you know, don't let the salty dogs bring you down. It's really, really hard. I know it's really hard. But for this person, it was an entitlement issue. The person's like, well, I've been longer. Why did that person get this job over me, right? Um, don't let those people bring you down. Those are just leeches you don't even need in your life. All right. Thank you all. That was actually very hard for me to get through. So thank you for being on that journey with me. So as you're filling up your, you know, your kind of your fire, I think it's also really important to fill up your head, right, with knowledge. So here are some of the uh, places I like to go to, again, expand my knowledge. So this first one here is Refind. And all of these are free, by the way. So Refind, Nuzzle, Feedly are kind of aggregators that bring in all these great articles and things that are based on like what you like. So you can say, you know, I'm interested in diversity, equity, inclusion, or I'm interested in tech or whatever, and you can bring in all these great resources. And then for me with Buffer, I absolutely adore Buffer. When I see something that's really, really great, I actually bring it in on my Buffer and I share it with other people. Because to me, if it's worth bookmarking, then why be worth sharing it? with other people. So I see somebody actually in the chat that's gonna be on this slide. So I hope that he's ready for this and he doesn't know I put him in here. So um, as you're filling this up, I was actually on a panel recently with Joel Law and he gave this fantastic advice that I wanna share with you about as you're filling up your, your tank, you're fueling that fire, right? These are some of the people that you want to connect with along the way. So you want to connect with people that are in that same boat. With you. If you're new, other newbies. If you're mid-level, other mid-level. Then you also want to connect with people that's a little bit ahead of you, right? Six months to a year ahead of you because they're going to go through challenges that you are going to be going through as you're doing your journey and you can also learn from them. And finally, where do you want to go? So whatever it is that you want to do, wherever you want to go, connect with people in those roles of where you want to be. So Jolt, thank you. Fantastic advice. And I think it's great for anybody. So I'm filling this up again, some questions that you uh, may want to ask yourself is, you know, where can you get those stretch assignments at? There are so many organizations hurting for learning development services. If you want to manage a project, own it, you know, build something, whatever, I'm sure there's a ton of organizations that would love to have you, right? So you do have to work for it. It doesn't just fall out of the sky, but they are out there. How can you take that hate and make it feel so difficult to do? It's okay to cry. It's okay for it to be emotional. I like to say that your path, your career, you don't go through it without scars, right? Those scars can, again, fuel you and help you get to the next level. And those scars also help you remember of what not to do. Don't ever do that to somebody else, right? Because you know what it was like to have it done to you. And then obviously, how can you own that professional growth? I think is also really important. All right, for the seeds, for the seeds, I love this. So Sylvia Duck made this about the iceberg illusion, right? That like when you succeed, when you have something go really well, they only see that little piece above the ice. They don't see everything underneath. So 
I think in 2018, I'm trying to remember, I started doing like an annual year in review, right? And it's pretty popular at the end of the year, people share, you know, what they went through. And I had such a fantastic year in 2018 specifically because I got to go uh, international for the first time. I got to go to England and Amsterdam and I, I, I did a lot of cool stuff with school and I met a lot of tremendous people. It was such an important year for me that, again, as a woman, I wrote all this stuff and you know what? I felt guilty. I felt guilty celebrating my own successes. I sure did. And I felt so guilty that I actually, in addition to my year end review, I posted this other thing, what was under my iceberg? Because I didn't want people to think it was just so, so easy that I did go through to get to where it was, right? So I share this with you to say that, you know, don't compare your life on social media to someone else's because you're actually seeing their highlight reel, the best of whatever it is that they're doing. You often don't see what's an iceberg, right? So I think it's really important to also share what's under your iceberg because you never know if someone else is going through that same problem, right? And that that encouragement is something that's really great. Uh, my doctoral advisor actually yesterday Twitter tweeted that, you know, he had applied for this, you know, national science funding um, grant and he got rejected I don't know how many times. And I applauded him for that. I actually said on Twitter, I said, I'm really, thank you for sharing this. I said, so many people need to see stuff like this because they didn't just don't think rejection is the part of the process, right? So, um, I challenge you again, as you're looking on social media, you're connecting with people, you know, think about, you know, what, what did it take for them to get there, right? Because it wasn't just instantaneous, I assure you. So as you're thinking about the seeds, again, you might want to think about how can I overcome what's under my iceberg, right? So those things I'm a little bit stuck on, I'm trying to peek up there above the water. What can I do to come overcome that? So how can you encourage others? I think by far success is the best team sport ever, right? Because people that I can give my time to and help and et cetera, you can really, really, again, encourage them. And again, you don't know how much that encouragement can really help them get to the next level. And then finally, what can you do right now that can pay off in the future? So important. All right. When we think about reflection, I think it's really important, again, to kind of own our own stuff. And some of the biggest mistakes that I have made in my life when I go back and really think and analyze it are because of blind spots that I had or because I, you know, made a rash judgment about something. So really going back and digging through. Now, not beating ourselves up about it. Let me be clear. I don't think that that's very valuable because there's enough negativity in our world. The last thing we need to do is turn on ourselves, right? So I think some reflection is healthy, but I also don't think that we need to just like beat ourselves up about it, right? So I encourage you as you're thinking about and reflecting, you know, what are some things that maybe you have done that maybe you weren't self-aware enough or hadn't really thought of? Now, this one is a tough one. Uh, I, 2021 for me has been the year of no. I think so often I've given so much of my time and energy, sadly, I think, to people that maybe didn't necessarily deserve it. So I am giving you permission to say that no one, no one is entitled to your career advice, your time, your help, or your energy because those are gifts that you give the world. They're gifts. So do not let people leech it. Don't let people drain it. Don't let people make you feel guilty, right? I, I, I wish I could show you, and I probably would have just for, um, you know, for your all's edification, you probably would have enjoyed it. Some of the LinkedIn messages I've gotten, you wanna know what has been the biggest hated thing that I've done is my job postings I post on LinkedIn. I Every day I get some hey message about that, that it's not good enough. It It's not for this. Um, I only do remote only. I only do U.S. jobs. I um, don't have jobs for uh, in incoming professionals. I don't have uh, jobs for managers, blah, 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 blah. If you don't like it, do your own. No one's stopping you from doing your own job list. But to my knowledge, everyone that sent me those messages, I don't think any of them has, has made their own job list. They just want to bring me down. They're alone. 
you know, they're not there. I don't, I don't care. I don't do it for them. I do it for the people looking for jobs. Right. So please, please do not let anybody tell you or make you feel, try to make you feel guilty about any of this. All this is your gifts with the world. And you feel free to give that to whoever you want. You don't have to explain yourself. So as you're reflecting, you know, how can you learn from failure, right? So again, don't beat yourself up. Don't do it. Don't do it. Enough, enough um, negativity in the world, right? So how can you learn from failure? Um, and how can you be accountable? Do the people around you encourage you and lift you up um, when you kind of make a goof? I think that that's really important. And, you know, again, are there other people that can help me on my journey? I think that that's really important. Finally, the part of all of this is paying it forward. Paying it forward with other people. All the people in these pictures, and I, I could have slides and slides and slides of, of pictures with people that have just made a tremendous impact on me as a professional and as a woman, right? And the thing that I love most is being a part of someone else's success. It's just the greatest feeling in the world, knowing that through my experiences, through the crap that I've went through, I'm able to support someone else on their journey, help, as, I, as my friend Jonathan Rock says, help, you know, pick someone else's lock, unlock that lock that they've been trying to pick for a while, right? So all these wonderful people, and again, there's more and more and more. Um, everyone on the picture here just means the world to me. Um, specifically, I'm going to pick on you, and you're not going to like this, Luis, but um, I found TLDC during a time where I didn't think I was good enough, and I never thought I could actually be a leader in learning, but yet here it is 2021 and I lead a training department. And I think a lot of that is because I surrounded myself with people that supported me, that I surrounded myself with um, people that encouraged me, and I did the work. I did the work. I, I did not let my circumstances stop me from where I wanted to go. And I'm only getting started. I'm going to the moon. <laughs> So I, I don't know where I'm going to go after this, but I'm going to keep climbing and I'm going to do it with the support of my tribe, of the support of the people who fan my flame. My friend Anna Leach says something that I absolutely adore. And I'll leave you kind of with this parting, parting thing, you know, going to be in your retirement speech someday. Is it going to be those moments of doubt or is it going to be those moments where you push through? Is it going to be the moments where, you know, you really overcame something or is it just going to be, oh, well, you know, that person over there said I wasn't good enough, right? Really think about it. Really think about how you can make those moments where you overcame. I have a litany <laughs> of things that I want to add in my retirement speech and I'm not even anywhere close to retiring, right? But really think about that. So again, as you're thinking about, you know, growing it, playing it, paying it forward, you know, how can you encourage others? Um, how can you honor people who gave you their time, right? I would not be where I am today had people not given me their time. And cool thing, they didn't ask for my credit card number either when I sent them a message. That's a whole other story for another day. And how can you keep growing? I think that that's really, really important as well. So again, Set your life on fire. Seek those who fan your flame. With that, here is how you can contact me. Sorry, the weird tech issues. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for being part of this journey. Again, this is by far the most personal presentation I think I've ever given. And it was really hard for me to get through. I still have a slightly runny nose, but I appreciate it. I take any questions if folks have them right now. Hey, Kara, thank you so much for doing this. Great stuff. I mean, yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think that it just says a lot that you're willing to, you know, to, um, to share this particular presentation here. And, and um, it means a lot to me. So I really appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> um, see, I'm not seeing any questions. You guys have any questions? Let's see. 
Um, yeah, it was fantastic. Really, really heartfelt. And um, that's what this particular event is really about. It's one of the reasons why I think that um, that it needed to be free for one, because um, I, you know, it's important for for voices like yours to to be heard. And, um, you know, I'm going to continue doing stuff like this because it really is um, it's it's vital to this to this space and to our society as we move forward. I shared if people want a copy of the deck. Um, I actually built this in Canva. So if you go to the Canva URL, you should have an access to it as well if you want to go back and revisit any. But again, just honored to be here, honored to tell my story. And we have a long way to go. And we got to support each other to get to get through it. So if you want to join my rocket ship to the moon, I would love to have you. All right, you guys, make sure you connect with Kara if you aren't already. Um, follow her on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Um, Kara is absolutely fantastic. And I want to remind you, um, in the lounge area, there are all these tables that you can join if you want to just pop in, make some connections, talk to people. There are some topics are listed there for, for you to participate in. Feel free to, to jump into that. And, of course, in the arena, which is actually the expo, uh, we have some vendors in there. So check those out. Um, you know, Heather Younger has her her booth where she uh, is is um, promoting her book. So you can you you can take a look at that. And we have a testimonial booth too. I'm not exactly sure how it works. Toddy and Molly were kind of putting it together, but check out our testimonial booth and um, and leave us a little message. I would I would absolutely love that. Oops, I see one thing in Q and A. Ah, I see three. Oh, there are three things. You want to go for these? Oh, I see four. I see five. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'll just go. Yeah, I'll go in order. So um, first question, uh, what are some things you encourage newbies in ID to focus on? Um, again, I'm old school. I actually, I say this often if you hear kind of my hiring philosophy, I hire you for your heart. I think that you can learn a lot of the technical stuff on the job, but I like to hire someone, a good human and puts good out into the world. But if you're not interviewing with me, um, I would say project management is a big skill that will, if you master it now, it can help you uh, transition into a leadership role. So if you're really thinking about how can I pay dividends on where I want to go, project management, I think is one of the most understated skills that um, you should focus on. But I, I think that if you have that coming in, it's going to pull dividends. And of course, the other technical stuff, I think that come practice. So um, definitely project management. And then also I'd say communication skills, because you're going to get pulled a million different directions and being able to communicate effectively, I think is really important. Um, Christine, how have you dealt with, sorry, code switching? Um, I've heard this is a recurring issue with professionals from Appalachia. It is. Um, and actually, that quote that I shared in my um, deck, I didn't really give the context, but it came up because when I say the word 10, I have a little bit of a twing and they said, oh, where are you from? And then I said that and then that's how that came about. So um, I myself, you know, I I own it. If people want to judge me because of where I grew up, that's on them. It's not on me. So um, there are still some words I say that it comes out. So tin and pain and uh, roof. Those are those are three. So uh, okay, Sky. What should you include in a message to someone you want to connect with on LinkedIn? I'm trying with little success. I think this one is um, somewhat controversial. Me, I, as long as you're not trying to sell me something, I'll connect with you. I don't care, right? No, no big deal for me. But the minute you're like, hey, buy my stuff, I'm like, nope, see ya, peace out, Cub Scout. So I just think it's just important to maybe share a little bit about, you know. Maybe, hey, I'm in this profession or, hey, I'm looking to break in or whatever. Maybe just share a little bit about, you know, maybe a sentence, if that, about yourself and then maybe why you're interested in connecting with that person. I think that would be good. Um, Tammy asks, as you work to build your team, what was most important to you? Again, Tammy, uh, I'm extremely biased, but my team are all good humans. Um, they have a vast amount of experience. And the thing that I love most about uh, the team that I have is all of them are curious. We actually had professional development day yesterday. I blocked their whole calendar and I said, hey, let's play in Camtasia and articulate all day today um, as, as a team. And we had so much fun. And I, I just love the fact that they are just so curious and really um, they, they care 
about the work that they do. I'm biased. I think we work in the best profession in the world, and they also share that passion with me. So I, I love that. Um, let's see. Sorry, it keeps scrolling. Um, let's see, Maria, I'm new looking for a job after being a teacher. Do you have suggestions for a former teacher? Okay. Um, first of all, welcome. You have a great educational background, and I think that translates really well to learning and development if that's something that you want to do. Also, some teachers that have went into like the customer success, so more on the tech side of the house um, for writing and then, you know, helping their customers learn technology. So I think that those might be good good bits and pieces. But I will say I saw Heidi Kirby here. I know she's doing some work with, um, I forget what your all's name is now for the teaching um, nonprofit, but uh, connect with Heidi Kirby. She will help you. Hey, Kara, I got to yes. cut it short because I got to jump Go into the next session. Sorry. I know that you probably have more questions in there to answer, but I actually, right now I'm a little shorthanded, but thank you no so worries. much for doing this, everybody. Um, next session is going to be, we're doing a mini session. It's only 20 minutes long, but it's with Vanessa Alzadi, who on LinkedIn this, this last month was posting um, um, other men in L and D that she um, wanted to kind of call out as people that have influenced her and have been positive in this space. So jump into that one. We'll be starting that one in about five minutes. Kara, thanks so much again. I yep. really, really appreciate it. Bye. Thank you all. Okay. Bye, everybody.